Want to take you back now live to Kennedy Space Center. You can see some crowds waiting and watching. You see the clock there? They're now in this critical time, this T minus five minutes here before Space Shuttle Discovery is set to lift off. The clock, though, as I've just been uh, noticing here, not moving at all. And that may not be a good sign for that crew of six astronauts there on that launch pad. I want to go to John Zarella, who's uh, standing by and watching this whole thing with me from uh, Kennedy Space Center uh, alongside uh, an astronaut. And John, Talk to me about what's happening, this computer display problem. Uh, what do you know? Yeah. Yeah, Brooke, about what every, what you guys were just talking about on the air, and I'm joined by Steve Swanson, a veteran shuttle astronaut, who flew, in fact, on his last of a flight on Discovery. Sure did. Uh, and what we're doing now, and Steve just set his clock, they've got five minutes now to resolve this problem. Pretty much, yep. The launch was supposed to be at 450, but they could go up until about 455, that's right? What, uh, my understanding of it, that's the way it works. It has to do with uh, the orbit of the ISS as uh, the Earth rotates below it. Space little, station. Yeah, exactly. Space station, and we have a little play on either side we can make up, but it's about five minutes either which way, so I'm hoping it gets done. Because the idea there, Brooke, is they've got to get off the ground, then they've got to catch up to the space station. Right. And it takes a couple of days to catch up, and if they don't get off the ground within this precise period of time, you're not going to get to the station. Not That's today, the exactly. Line. you got to yeah. wait till tomorrow and do it again. wait till tomorrow and try again. But okay. the problem is, as you guys were pointing out earlier, Brooke, it's range safety right now. They have a problem with their computer. Right, their main and, computer went down. And they can't see, literally they're blind, when the shuttle lifts off. Right. And they have to be able to see the shuttle in case, God forbid, something goes wrong. Right. That's their job is if we go off of course, all right, they have a way to stop us from killing off course. Oh, we just heard they're going. They're go. They are go. Very good. All right, we just heard they are go. Yep. They've cleared it, so. That's one of them. Okay, so they've the cleared computer, it. Exactly here we go. Let's yep. listen in, so you guys. Sorry to cut you off, but I want to listen in to some of the traffic within Mission Control. Let's listen to that. I need to put this, uh, your hold switch to proceed position. 40 seconds remaining in our launch window. Range is go. Fifteen seconds remaining in our hold. Copy. Seven and eight will pick up momentarily. CGLS, pick up the clock on your mark. CGLS, copy. Three, two, one, mark. T minus five minutes. T minus five minutes and counting. TLT, OTC, perform ATU start. Talking about Discovery being, uh, you know, the uh, oldest of the launch vehicles and, uh, you most know, used, yeah. most used and, and what a tremendous vehicle, uh, you know, flew both the return to flight missions, That's right. flew John Glenn into space, exactly. uh, and, you know, Right down Guys, to the let me jump in. Guys, let me jump oh, in yeah. for She's just a second. Like a uh, Z, let me jump yeah, in because so from what from what we just understood, now we're seeing that the clock is now officially tick down, ticking down. So it is a go. So can you ask your uh, astronaut yes. friend there what would be going on inside of Discovery? Is that the crew of six is sitting there wondering their fate? Uh, what would they be thinking? What would he be thinking right now? The question is, what are you guys thinking right now, particularly with this delay, and what's the crew thinking inside there? Uh, mostly they're thinking about their job. We yeah. always say the biggest fear we have is making a mistake. <laughs> and so we, we really concentrate very hard on our job and make sure we're going to do everything just the best we can. And you know, Brooke, this is a very veteran crew. Yes, it you is. Know, at one point, this Discovery flight was supposed to be the very last flight in the space shuttle program. That's right. Steve Lindsay, the commander, was the head of the astronaut office. That's right. He told me that at time, one time he turned down this opportunity a couple times before he finally agreed to fly. Nicole Stott and Mike Barrett were on the International Space Station when they got the call to fly exactly. this flight. Right, right. So um, a real veteran crew, and it has been a long road getting here. Thanks, Problems sir. with hydrogen leaks, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. And, and finally here now in February, uh, Discovery set to make a 39th and, uh, and, final, uh, and final voyage. What are we looking at now? Uh, Three minutes, about three minutes, Brooke, till liftoff here. Three minutes to go. This this space shuttle has spent 352 days now. in orbit, circled the Earth 5,628 times. Sure I mean, it's just amazing. Time. It has to, though, be bittersweet for the folks at NASA to see this final launch for Discovery. And, yeah, I, I was saying that to, uh, to Steve, too, because, you know, Steve flew on Discovery his right. last flight. It uh, has to be you're watching Discovery fly for the final time oh, now. Oh, it's sad in a way. I mean, we, we enjoy launches, and the mission is a great thing. We're all happy about that. But in a way, it's also sad to see the last flight. I mean, it's uh, such a wonderful vehicle.
You know, you know, Brooke, when you when you think back now here, three flights left. There's so over 250,000 people, we've been told, out there along the Space Coast yeah, yeah. to watch this launch today. Yeah, I was wondering uh, if and, the crowds uh, would be you know, bigger. Yeah. Are they bigger? Huge crowd. Enormous crowd. Much, much bigger. And when you get to that April launch, uh, they expect about 400,000 yeah, people. Yeah, it's pretty huge. And then in the summer, June, July, yeah, the last Atlantis launch, a million people expected here for that launch, bro. What are they doing right now? This is it. We're in the final couple right, minutes. It's now, two minutes Steve. to go, right? Right now. So they're uh, right now. They just uh, close their visors, turn on their oxygen. So their their suits can be pressurized. They don't have to worry about it. in case the cabin does depressurize. They're going to be fine in there. And uh, now they're now at this point, they're just getting ready. They're you know kind of settling down in their seats, making sure everything's ready to go and uh, getting ready for the big ride. You, you get to this point now, when you're up, when you're sitting up there on those two flights, you're thinking, okay, I think we got a pretty good shot of getting yeah, off the ground. That's exactly, you know, like, <laughs> I say that, until you come out of a nine-minute hall, you don't really think you're going, right? Then you come out of a nine-minute hall, and think, well, there's a pretty good chance I'm going. Now you get to this point, and there's a really good chance you're going. And the heart it, gets going yeah, a little faster. Yeah, exactly. And the it next looks big like step they is are 31 going. seconds, the computers on board take over. Yeah, yeah it well, looks like they are going half, here right? where we're so in. when that happens, Take a look at the clock here. Here we go, 129. That's pretty much almost like a 99 percent chance you're going at that point so that's what we always wait for when that takes over all right we're going you know though brooke i've been here for a lot of launches yeah and i've seen them stop this countdown with uh, i mean literally with a couple of seconds that's true before the uh, they light yeah. those solids it's true but uh the way in the last about uh 10 years it's changed and they yeah. got, we got much better at it so so it's not let's a go just, until it's a go one let's, minute, guys brooke. let's just yep. listen it's one minute yep. and counting the ground launch sequencer will verify that the three main engines are ready to start. The booster joint heaters are being deactivated at this time. T-minus 48 seconds and we're transferring to orbiter internal power. Discovery is now running on its uh, three onboard fuel cells. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start at T-minus 31 seconds. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 20. 20 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated, protecting Discovery and the launch pad from acoustical energy waves. Go for main engine. Go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Two, one. Booster ignition and the final liftoff, a, a tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Space shuttle now rolling over onto its back for the eight minute ride into orbit. Discovery now making one last reach for the stars. Maximum pressure reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes supersonic. Discovery Houston, you are go at throttle up. Will Commander Steve Lindsay acknowledging the call from Capcom Charlie Hoba as Discovery's three main engines throttle back up. Lindsay is joined on the flight deck by pilot Eric Bowen, mission specialist Al Drew, and Nicole Stott. Mission specialist Mike Barrett and Steve Bowen. Discovery's three main engines are burning fuel at a rate that would drain an average swimming pool in about 25 seconds. <laughs> The engines combined with the solid rocket boosters produce more than 7 million pounds of thrust. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, we're standing by for separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Discovery now traveling 2,695 miles an hour. Its altitude, 24 miles. Downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 29 miles. There they go. 
Booster separation confirmed. Discovery's guidance is now converging as the shuttle's onboard computers fine-tune the flight. Two minutes, 25 seconds into the flight, Discovery traveling 3,100 Well, I don't know about you, but uh, I just got goosebumps watching that happen. Uh, the Space Shuttle Discovery final launch from Kennedy Space Center. I want to go back to John Zarella and his astronaut friend there, Stephen Swanson. Uh, and gentlemen, Z, can you ask Stephen w what that feels like? I mean, we just mentioned it goes supersonic. How loud? What does that feel like? You know, the question, of course, is uh, what everybody wants to know, and, and Brooke was asking is, what does that feel like? You know, you when you go through that maximum aerodynamic pressure, oh, yeah. and you, it's but the it's, elephant on the chest. Or... Yeah, you know, one word is acceleration. <laughs> 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 it's amazing, though. It's, it's like you're on the end of your back, and I like to, like a big a hydraulic press just hits you in the back, and it never stops going. It just keeps pushing and pushing, and just it's just amazing. It just keeps going. And, and then for that long, eight and a half minutes, you get kind of, kind of acceleration. Because, yeah, we're waiting now, because Brooke, you know, the next major milestone comes up, as, as Steve was saying, at eight and a half minutes, when the giant orange tank there, that's the external tank, separates. And at that point, you're in space. You're free floating, you're in space, you're done. Well, so what's that's the, the, what's the moment of milestone. Weight, what's the moment of weightlessness? What does that feel like? We all want to know that. Mom, what does it feel like when you go weightless? Well, you're strapped in, so you yeah, don't feel it right at no, that well, What point. you feel, though, is or what you see mostly is the fact that everything you had on here just kind of floats up in front of you, and you have to grab it and put it back where, where it belongs. <laughs> you didn't have it done well. Yeah, yeah, if it wasn't on right, it's not supposed to be doing <laughs> exactly. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I imagine Maybe they return, are. You know, Brooke. Yeah. I imagine they're very much strapped in. Return. Z, hang on, because I think we're, we're going to quickly turn yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. We have the moment of liftoff. Do we have that, guys? Let's play that. One. Booster ignition and the final liftoff of Discovery. A tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. You heard him in mission. Heard him in mission control. Dedication, hard work, pride. Uh, and it, from what I understand, talking to an astronaut just a moment ago, it takes two days for this crew to get all the way up to the International Space Station where they're headed, and they're headed up there for this 11-day mission. Uh, John, what is the mission once they get up there? Well, you know, again, it's mostly a resupply mission of the International Space Station. They're going to bring up, really what comes out, a big closet is one of the things exactly. they're bringing up. Storage area. Storage area. Exactly. Uh, because the station is built. It's done. Uh, and they're also bringing up Robonaut, too. That's right. That's a big deal. That is. It's, uh, you know, the most sophisticated, dexterous, uh, you know, artificial intelligence that's ever been uh, put up anywhere. Uh, you know, uh, General Motors and NASA they're combined, combined together. On, that, yes. on that project. And eventually, you know, later generations of, uh, of of, uh, Robonaut will probably accompany crews to Mars to help out with tasks on Mars and places yeah, like that. Yeah, we hope to use it on spacewalks someday too. It's, it'd be a great thing to have to hold something for you when you're you know, moving some other tools around or moving something around. Something that could, you could say, hey, hold this for me. It'd be great to have while you're out there. Yeah, and so, so you know, there, there, there are a tremendous amount, you know, the fact of the matter, uh, Brooke, is we're looking yeah. at the end of an era here. Yes. You know, this is it. You, we're not going to see a lifting body like this probably in no, our lifetimes no, again. No, no, no. Could do this and then but return safely here. This yeah, is it. I mean, the show is an amazing vehicle. I mean, yeah. what it can do is fantastic, but it can't take us out of low Earth orbit. No. That's well, I know I've got to let you two go. One, what it can do is, is just amazing. It, right, it is amazing. I got to let you go because I have a feeling folks in Situation Room want you to stand by because I know Wolf Blitzer will want to talk to you about this historic moment as well. But my thanks to Stephen Swanson and to you, John Zarella, for that. And how about that? We just watched the 39th voyage liftoff space shuttle discovery. It's hugely significant, not just for this space shuttle, but the entire fleet because uh, these are the final liftoffs we will be seeing this year. And that does it for me here in Atlanta. I'm Brooke Baldwin, now to Wolf Blitzer in Washington with the Situation Room.